Yo, what's happening? It's Coach Brandon, and inside of this video, I'm going to be showing you how I went from looking like this to looking like this. All right, so I'm going to be breaking down my entire physique transformation from start to finish. And what I'm going to be doing is giving you the seven key principles that you need to understand and implement if you want to successfully transform your physique just like I did, only without making all the mistakes that I made in the process that made my physique transformation, frankly, take you know, quite a lot longer than it really needed to take. Okay, so real quick before we get into it, um, if you're new here, this channel is all about helping you get into and stay in the best shape of your life. And I share simple and in-depth information on fat loss, on muscle building, nutrition, training, and recovery supplementation to help you do just that. So if your goal is to get as lean, muscular, fit, and healthy as you possibly can, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss anything, all right? So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, just to give you like a little bit of backstory on how my transformation started. Um, so growing up, like I was always very athletic. Um, I was lucky enough for my dad to have put me in hockey at the age of about four. And I played hockey every single season, like for years and years until um, I got into high school, basically. And my early intro to lifting weight started when I was about 13 years old. And, you know, my dad decided I was old enough to start lifting weights. And he brought home a, a, like an old school set of weights. So like rusty barbells, uh, a rickety old bench for, for bench press and those like blue and gold um, old school weights that had sand filled, filled in them, right? So those were in my basement. Um, also, when I, when I got into high school, I ended up trying out for the high school football team and I made the team, which in Canada it really isn't a big deal at all because if you, you know, football is not big here. If you try out for the team in high school, you're basically guaranteed to make it. They just want bodies. Um, so anyway, that led to me uh, often going to the high school weight room with a few of my buddies who were also on the team. And uh, at that point in time, between the ages of you know 13 all the way up to 18 i would just weight train like sporadically so like anytime i got inspired like for example like watching the movie like 300 or something like that where there's actors that are in really good shape and are lean and, and have impressive physiques i would i would feel inspired so i'd wander into the the room where the weights were in my basement and like muck around or me and a few of my buddies who were on the football team would wander into the weight room once in a while on our lunch hour and lift some weights, right? So there, the, the consistency was not there for me to consider that actually part of my transformation. And in fact, after my, my first year of, of playing on the high school football team, and once I got into my second year of high school, I ended up quitting playing every sport that I had, playing, I had played growing up. So I, I quit pretty much being active, right? I just lost interest. Um, I stopped playing hockey for the first time in like, uh, in like 12 years. Like I, like I said, I played my entire life. And basically I just got into, all I was interested in, in at that point was drinking, partying, screwing around with friends and playing video games. So that's all I really did for the next few years. And it wasn't until I turned 18 and all of the, I got out of high school and all of those bad like partying habits began to get progressively worse. And I started to become very like disgusted and repulsed in myself um, just because of like the way I was living, um, how, that how that was affecting me, et cetera, et cetera. So it wasn't until that point that my transformation officially began. And the, the day that my transformation officially began, um, I know it, I remember it because what I did was I went into the bathroom, I took my shirt off, I took a before photo with the sole intention for the sole purpose of that being my before photo, and then I got in my car, I drove to the gym, and I paid in full for a full year membership to the gym, okay? And from that point onward, I was, I was hooked because I was replacing all of my bad habits, the drinking, the partying, I was even you know smoking at that point, with going to the gym. And that leads me to principle number one and two 
of this video. And principle number one is in order to set yourself up for a successful physique transformation, you must be crystal clear on your why and your why must be emotionally compelling. Now, the formula to a, a, a truly emotionally compelling why is you must be motivated away from both the pain of where you're at right now and the fear of where you're going to be headed and where you're going in the future if you do not change, right? So for me, like I mentioned, I was not happy with where I was at. I looked in the mirror. I did not like what I saw. Um, I did not like who I was, the way I was living. And um, I started to deeply reflect on what would happen if I kept uh, operating in the same way on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And that, that, to be frank, it scared the shit out of me, right? Um, on top of that, you also need to be motivated toward the, the vision of what you want your life, your body, and every area of your life to look like. So what do you want your body to look like? What do you want to feel like? And how is that going to affect you in every other area of your life? And you want to reflect on this as deeply as possible so you really have like a deep-rooted, again, emotionally compelling why behind why you're doing this, right? So that's going to that's gonna motivate you and get you to the gym and get you to eat the way that you need to eat and do the things that you need to do to transform your physique on the days that you don't really feel like it, right? Because that's, it's required. You got to do it even when you don't feel like it, right? Um, which leads me to principle number two, which is you must be fully committed. So like I mentioned in those first like early days of me getting into lifting weights and that kind of thing, I was never, the, the problem was like, I didn't get results. And the reason that I never got results because I was not fully committed, right? I would just go whenever I felt inspired or motivated, um, or it was convenient, right? So it was not enough consistency for me to see any results because I was not fully committed. And when I say being fully committed, what I mean is like commitment, it's not enough just to, to tell yourself in your mind that, or, or even tell other people that you're committed. You must prove to yourself that you're committed by taking specific actions and, and making investments, right? So for me, the, the first few actions and investments that I made that proved that I was fully committed and really set up my transformation to be successful was taking that before photo, driving to the gym, and paying in full for uh, a full year gym membership, and then starting to go every single, uh, I was going basically five to seven days a week in the beginning, right? So you must be crystal clear on your why, and you must be fully committed by taking specific commitment actions and getting invested in whatever way you can. So um, with your time, your energy, and monetarily as well, okay? So like I said, uh, from that point onward, I was, I was addicted to going to the gym. I loved it. I was replacing bad habits with, with the gym basically. Um, and for the first few years of going to the gym, um, it wasn't all like rainbows and unicorns and, and, and smooth sailing from, from there on out. Uh, so I had like the hard training down. I enjoyed it. I like training hard, but I was still not really doing things properly. I didn't know what I was doing in the gym as you know, most people aren't going to know what they're doing in the gym um, in the beginning, um, which leads me to principle number three, which is you need to train hard and with structure and intention, right? So basically what that means is you should always have a program. You need to include progressive overload in your program, which is basically means doing more every single week. So working a little bit harder every single week in a way that's controlled and measured. And you need to keep track of everything that you do in order to do that, right? So for me early on, I was always following programs. My problem was I was always following like different programs, right? So I'd follow one program that I found on the internet for like maybe one to four weeks. And then I would decide I wasn't making progress fast enough when I jumped to another program. So um, I was, I, I had the training hard part down. I didn't have the, the structure down, right? There was some structure, but you know, I, I was buying into like muscle confusion and I was kind of trying different things out, which, you know, at a certain point, um, from a certain perspective, it's good to try, try things out. But at the same time, if you don't, uh, at least if you don't do something for long enough and to, to see it all the way through, like 
chances are that thing is going to work. But if you don't do it for long enough and consistently enough, then you're not going to see like the results that, that it can produce. Right. So that's principle number three. Principle number four is a physique transformation is impossible without changing your diet. And I have a really good quote I want to read from the book Scientific Principles of Hypertrophy Training by Renaissance Periodization, um, which is an awesome book. I highly recommend it if you're really into like reading into the science of, of gaining muscle, that kind of thing. But the quote goes, Although not an, as uh, an aspect of training specificity, diet is critically important to muscle growth. Its quality and specifics can have a very large influence on the amount of muscle gained from the exact same training program. A poor diet can make an amazing program, an amazing training program seem almost completely ineffective. And a great diet can make a mediocre training program lead to consistent growth as many IFBB pro bodybuilders unfortunately demonstrate. So the reason I wanted to include this as one of the key principles is because um, for like most guys and, 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 and me when I started for the first like few years of my, my transformation process, um, I did not understand the importance of diet, right? So I got into the gym, I started training consistently, lifting weights heavy, um, and I saw some progress, right? You're gonna make some, some newbie gains if you stay consistent for the first few months. So I got a little bigger, um, I put on a little bit of muscle and I got stronger, but I quickly hit a plateau and it wasn't until about almost two years later that I, I fully accepted the fact that, okay, my diet is not good enough, right? Um, so when I first started, I did know that I, 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 need, I needed to start eating better but my approach was like very soft, right? So I was just trying to eat healthier and I was cutting out junk food. I was, you know, kind of sort of trying to eat more protein, but there was no structure to it, right? I wasn't keeping track of anything. I wasn't following like a specific diet plan. Um, so that led to me reaching out to a coach that I found on Instagram. It was like a, one of those big influencers with like 500,000 followers, um, I signed up for his coaching program, uh, to say the least, knowing what I know now and, and being a coach myself now, it wasn't really the greatest program. Basically, I just got like a few PDFs and a very cookie cutter meal plan. On that meal plan, I was eating literally every day, six meals a day, uh, um, one to, to, or two to, two to three hours um, between every single meal. And it was very cookie cutter. I was eating egg whites, uh, oatmeal, peanut butter, and then chicken breast like three times a day, chicken breast, ch chicken breast, brown rice, broccoli, um, bison and sweet potato, and then egg whites and peanut butter again before bed. So not terrible. Um, I followed it to a T. I was instructed to meal prep for the entire week all in one day, which, which I did every single week consistently for a pretty long period of time. Um, I did get a lot out of that actually, because it, it made me disciplined. It made me start eating, um, you know, not for taste and for results. Um, so I did get quite a bit out of it, but by no means, like knowing what I know now, you do not need to eat that strict. Um, your diet does not need to be like that, that much like food quality focused, although it is good, but you can be a lot more balanced, right? Um, so anyway, principle number four is a physique transformation is impossible without changing your diet and your, your diet has to be changed measurably. Okay. And I'm going to get into this a little more in, uh, in some of the later principles in this video. Okay. Um, so I actually got some pretty amazing results following that, that diet as strictly as I was following it. Like I said, I was very committed. Um, I got my head down. I pushed through, I was meal prepping every week. I was eating nothing, but everything on that meal plan, uh, day in, day out, except for one single cheat meal per week. And I got some pretty awesome results and I'll, I'll post the photos, um, on this video, the results that I got from following that diet for two months. Uh, but after that two months, I got rid of the coach because there re really wasn't much communication between us. And, uh, my expectations at this point were still not, not realistic at all. So I thought that I should be making progress faster than that and better progress than that on a regular basis. So uh, that led me back to searching for answers on the internet. And I ended up stumbling upon something called the go mad diet. Now, if you haven't heard of the go mad diet before, uh, what go mad stands for is gallon of whole milk per day. 
And what you do on this diet is you drink an entire gallon of whole milk every single day on top of what all what, what you already uh, normally eat on a regular basis, right? So at the time, I continued to follow that that cookie cutter meal plan that that coach gave me, um, and I added the gallon of whole milk on top of it. So six meals a day, a gallon of whole milk um, every single day on top of it. Uh, to say the least, it was uh, <laughs> it was brutal, right? So I'll, I didn't know it at the time because I didn't know I didn't know how to count my calories. I didn't bother. Yeah, rather I did not bother to, to add up the amount of calories I, I was consuming, but uh, I did end up going back a few years later um, uh, and I, I added it all up. I was consuming 5,500 calories per day for 30 days and what ended up happening is I went from about 165, 170 pounds to 195 pounds. To this day, that's the heaviest I've ever been. Um, it did not feel good. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt tired, exhausted all the time. Obviously, I felt bloated all day. Like I was literally just like full to the brim all day long. Um, my hips, my knees, my ankles were sore all the time from carrying around all that extra weight like that I gained so quickly. And to say the least, that did not look very good, right? Especially in comparison to how good I looked going into it, right? Because I, I did make some pretty good progress. Uh, before then, I just had unrealistic expectations, right? Which leads me to principle number five, which is you must develop realistic expectations, right? Transformations happen due to slow and consistent progress over time that's therefore easy to sustain, right? The more of a rush you're in, the harder it's going to be to maintain your progress, the more you're gonna be on and off, and the faster you, you try to go, the more likely it is that you're not even gonna make the kind of progress that you wanna make, right? So for example, if you're trying to lose body fat, if you try to lose weight too quickly, uh, you're not gonna be losing body fat. You're gonna be losing uh, a lot of water weight, glycogen, um, and, and muscle as well. And chances are, you, if you lose weight too quickly, you'll be losing more muscle mass than you lose body fat which leads to a very common situation that I see now as a coach where guys lose a bunch of weight really fast and they end up looking uh, basically like they're, they're the same body fat percentage as they were when they started, but now they just look skinnier and like their arms and their legs and stuff, but they still have the belly fat, that kind of thing, right? Um, and on the other hand, for me, as you can see, uh, gaining weight too fast did not lean, lead to me gaining a whole lot of muscle. It led to me gaining a bunch of water weight. So I just looked bloated and clearly a lot of body fat as well. Okay. So, uh, so key principle number five to a successful physique transformation, and this one's really important is you must develop realistic expectations. Okay. So after I, I finished the GOMAD diet, and I took the gallon of whole milk out of my diet. I kind of went back to that meal plan. I started changing it up a little bit to make it a little more like what I wanted to eat, that kind of thing. But I, uh, from there, like that led to the roughest like two to three years of my, of my transformation. So I started losing weight, obviously. So as soon as I took the gallon of whole milk a day out of my diet, obviously I lost probably like 10, 10 pounds really quickly. And then over the course of the next few years, I was just sort of like losing weight slowly. And uh, at the time, I didn't, I, I still do not understand that in order to look lean and muscular, you got to look lean, you got to commit to a bit of weight loss to lose fat. So in my mind, my goal was to still gain weight and get as big as possible and get, you know, as big as strong and muscular as possible. But despite that, I was losing weight. So because I didn't know what I was doing, I was trying to gain weight still, but I was losing weight. So... I began uh, just slowly losing motivation, so getting more and more demotivated over the course of the years as time went on. Um, and I, I was losing interest in it. I wasn't, uh, I was losing passion for it. I was just getting frustrated, right? It was a burden on my life. Um, so for the next two to three years, I didn't really make a whole lot of progress. I just sort of stayed the same. I didn't look lean. I still looked soft, flat, and, and skinny. And uh, I just wasn't focusing on it as much. Although in that period of time, I did end up stumbling upon the evidence-based um, bodybuilding community where I started learning like the actual good, um, solid and scientific information around bodybuilding, losing fat, building muscle and getting an amazing shape. And it wasn't until uh, a few years later after I did, so I think it was uh, exactly three years after I finished the GOMAD diet that 
I finally got sick of just like coasting and not making any progress. And I decided to start taking it seriously again and actually applying the information that I learned. Because as I was learning that good information, I was not applying it because I was just so demotivated from not making progress for such a long period of time, right? And that leads me to principle number six, which is you must know the 80-20, okay? So what do I mean when I say the 80-20? So basically with any endeavor, so with a pursuit of any goal that you're working toward, you can usually identify 20% of the things that you need to do that will produce 80% of the results. So it's just basically learning how to be efficient. What things are the most important, right? And this is really powerful when it comes to fitness because uh, there is a very distinct 80-20 when it comes to nutrition, training, and recovery. And that allows you to make, uh, uh, to, to, to know exactly what the things are that are going to produce the results and focus on only those things, which makes it really easy to fit uh, a fitness and nutrition program into your lifestyle, right? So for example, when it comes to nutrition, because I followed that meal plan and I got results from that very strict meal plan, I thought that's the way that you had to eat all the time in order to make progress and get results. Um, but what I ended up learning when I got into the, the science-based, the evidence-based science community is that really the 80-20 the of nutrition is you just need to to keep track of your total daily calorie intake and make sure it's aligned with your goals and your total daily macronutrient intake. So how many calories you, are you consuming, uh, protein, carbs, and fat intake, and you have to keep that balanced and in control. So it doesn't matter how many meals you eat per day. You don't need to eat super strict, boring, bland, like chicken breast, brown rice, uh, bison, sweet potato, um, and that kind of thing day in and day out. You just need to keep track of your calories and your macronutrients, right? Um, same thing goes for training. There's a very distinct 80, 20 in training and recovery, right? And that's when you understand this 80, 20 transforming your physique becomes, um, a lot more simple, right? Cause you know, the things that you need to focus on when you don't have much time and like, and fitness becomes more of like an inconvenience and a, and a side thing for you, um, et cetera, right? Um, so that leads me to the very last, the seventh principle of this video to a successful physique transformation, which is you must have perseverance. And uh, I'm going to read off a quote that resonates with this principle. And that quote is, I do not think that there is any other quality so essential to success other than the quality of perseverance. It overcomes everything, even nature. And that's a quote from John D. Rockefeller. And so perseverance is really all you need, right? And when we look at the definition of perseverance, uh, it states that um, perseverance is steady persistence in a course of action, a purpose, a state, etc. especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, or discouragement. So basically, as long as you are fully committed to achieving the, the body that you want to achieve and you decide that no matter what the, the obstacles are, no matter what difficulties you run into, no matter how discouraged you get, um, you're in it to win it and you're going to see it all the way through, eventually you're going to succeed, right? It's only uh, going to be a matter of time. So what you need to do is you need to decide that you are doing this no matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, et cetera, right? And as long as you develop that mindset and, and that perseverance, you're going to make it happen, right? So just commit, decide that you're going to do it, go all in, and uh, no matter what the, uh, the, the difficulties, the obstacles are, and you're going to make it. And a good tip for this is... And this is something that I did and I still kind of do sometimes with other endeavors that I'm working toward. Imagine your life as like a documentary and associate any time that you're struggling or you're facing difficulties or obstacles with success, right? So imagining your life as a, as a documentary um, is kind of like a good way to visualize like what doing that looks like, right? Because in a documentary, you see like the, the struggle and then very quickly... Um, at the end of the documentary, you see the success, right? So if you imagine your life as a, as a documentary and you imagine that right now, like, oh, I'm, I'm struggling, um, I'm pushing through this, uh, that's going to help you associate that, that those obstacles, the difficulties and the struggles with success.
all right? And I think that's the perfect place to end this video. Um, so again, this channel is all about helping you get into and stay in the best shape of your life. And I'll be sharing a lot more simple and in-depth uh, information on fat loss, muscle building, uh, diet, nutrition, training, recovery, supplements to help you do just that. So if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, make sure to smash that like button, um, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell to make sure that you do not miss any videos when I upload. And also leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this video, um, ask any questions that you may have, or let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. Um, also, if you would like to learn more about how I can help you in your physique transformation journey on a more personal level, uh, make sure to check out the links in the description below this video and the pinned comments below. And at that, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.